Hi, welcome back to the channel everybody. Today, we're gonna be doing more chaser stuff, but we have to inspect our spare engine and see what's wrong with this. Supposedly blown head gasket, but we won't know about the damage until we get the head off. So we need to do that. Plus, we need to do some more Bogan bodywork. We gotta get this big dent out, thank you Coda. And uh, it's gonna involve a welder and a sliding hammer. That's definitely for sure there. But before we can really do anything else, I wanna wash this thing because every time I touch the car, it just keeps dropping more and more dirt on the ground and I hate having a dirty shop floor. So let's get the old girl clean. Well, this thing definitely tidied up nice. Definitely don't think I've seen it this clean in a very long time. Maybe when we bought the car, it was this clean. <laughs> but to be fair, FUC missiles generally don't get washed properly, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, now it doesn't have any of that dirt or grime stuck to it everywhere, which means while we're working on the car, none of that's gonna fall off and get in my face or anything like that, or dirty the shop up. So while this thing's outside drying, we're gonna get onto another task. I'm gonna build myself a car. Finished building the car took way longer than I would like to admit, but that's what happens when you don't read the instructions. This has a very important purpose in a little bit, so that's going aside. For now, I want to tackle something I have never done before, which is dent pulling. I've never pulled a dent out in my life, but I have a sliding hammer and I have some pieces of steel that I've drilled holes in so we can weld them on and pull them out. Um, but I'm just going to try and wing this and make this a little bit better. Um, I don't really have to, but... I want to. So, um, from what I've read is you want to start from the outer and work your way inner. If you are a body guy, please give me some tips in the comment section. I will read it for the next one. But essentially, I'm just going to use these plates that I've just kind of made and I'm just going to tack weld them in place, use a sliding hammer to pull this out and just try to pull it out and get it as close as we can to where it should be. And I'm not going to be putting putty or anything on this. That's just to like pull it back out so that it's a little bit nicer. That's it. That's it. And I want to try and learn a new skill. So let's do it. It's better than it was. That's the main thing. But the one thing I did learn is I'm not good at body work. <laughs> Definitely, I mean, obviously, it takes many, many years to get good at this kind of stuff. But I mean, I was just giving it a go, giving it a raw hot go. Um, obviously, because we were welding them on and pulling and stuff, it started making a few holes in certain places from where the weld, like, you know, the whole thing broke away from the body. So I went and welded all those holes up. Um, and that turned into me just chasing it for a while, even though I literally had the welder set at like only 50 amps, super low, using 0.6 uh, gauge or 0.6 mil wire and stuff. It still was just super thin there. Actually, I'm really, really surprised how thin Toyota panel steel is. I don't know, maybe it was just super thin in those areas because of the pulling and stuff on it. Um, but yeah, it was very, very hard. And I also just stitch welded up the seam here again and I will be uh, putting seam seal on everything. I'm not gonna putty this or anything. My whole goal was to just pull it out more, which I have. I will floppy disk all of this to make it smooth, and then, um, yeah, we're good. It's not perfect, but the door closed really nice now. Um, obviously, this door's a bit bent here as well, but that should fit a fresh door on there, no problem. And then when that's all seam sealed up, it should be good too and not leak. 
there is another section here in the back that I need to attend to, but that's just gonna be me smacking it with a hammer from the inside of the trunk flat down and then seam sealing it up. The main reason why I did this is to pretty much keep smoke out of the cabin. The two pieces of steel had separated and there was a big hole there. So yeah, once this is all seam sealed up and now that this is pulled out, should be less chances of uh, smoke filling the cabin. Obviously being a missile, you hot lap this thing a lot, you can fill up the cabin with smoke pretty quickly. Typical ADHD things. Um, I said I wasn't gonna do it, and then I looked at it again, and it bothered me, so now I've already fixed this part that I wanted to do later on, and now I'm fixing the rest of this seam up. I've just bashed it all up, ready to seal, and I just started putting this new rust converter on here that I got. That is just incredible. This used to be rusty, look at it. It's all now just like turned straight back to steel, and all this is getting turned back to steel. So it's just like CRC's Pro Grade Rust Converter. It pretty much just smells like pool acid, but I mean, it probably is just that, but yeah. It's doing a really good job. It's like melting the rust off in certain places. It's kind of crazy. Like here, you can see it just dripping down the rust. Kind of nice. Taking a quick moment to remind you guys about the Nissan Stasia we are giving away here on the channel. This thing has an RB25 turbo in there, a full station wagon, but with an R34 GTR front end on it. It's probably one of the sickest wagons out there and it could be yours. The best thing yet is that it is 25 years old, which means it's eligible to be exported to the USA. And that is why we are doing this. We're actually covering the cost of having this car exported to the winner in the USA. So best of luck, everybody. Every $1 that you spend on Semit.net will get you automatically entered for a chance to win this Stasia. One really cool thing as well is we just dropped our brand new Semit HQ shirts. This is actually last year's one, but we have the new ones and also hoodies with updated sponsors and all the signs and neon stuff all updated as well as the livery on the car on the front. Make sure you check it out, semit.net. Don't sleep on that, guys. For more information, the official rules are on the website. But for now, let's get back to the chaser. Just taking my little 1J for a walk. <sighs> it's a little heavy. So I bought this motor as a spare motor. My plan with this is to rebuild it and have it as a backup engine for the chaser. The, the engine that's in the chaser, um, it's a little low on compression. It's all even though, so it's just wear, normal wear from it being drifted non-stop repeatedly and heat cycled so many times. Um, so this is gonna become my backup engine for that. But I need to figure out if it just needs a head gasket or a full rebuild. We, if we're super lucky, just a head gasket. If, um, you know, I guess what I was expecting was that it was definitely gonna need a rebuild, but it'd be kinda cool if it was just a head gasket. But if it is a head gasket, then I'm worried if water's just been chilling in the chambers for a long time now. But plugs are all still in it, and I don't know. Everything I've looked at on this engine and stuff, it doesn't look like it was a head gasket, so let's pop the head off and have a look. I've never pulled the head off a of 1J before, but we're gonna do it together, and that is why I got this car. Every single time I pull apart an engine, I have a cut for that engine. Because everything goes in its place, in its order, gets marked, and I never want to mix that up with anything else that's going on. Obviously we pull down a lot of engines and all that kind of stuff here, and I don't want to get anything misplaced. And instead of having stuff on the floor, we can just have everything from the engine on one of these carts and push the cart around. And it's like just so much easier and easy to maintain. So I'm just gonna look at this for a little bit and figure out what's the first thing I need to take off. And it looks like I just need to undo the oil feed for the VVTI. Valve cover's off, I think camshaft's out. Um, I'll probably just cut the timing belt because stuff taking that off down there. Just wanna get this head off and see what we're dealing with.
Everything's been going pretty smooth so far. Um, other than the engine just looking like it didn't really get serviced regularly, um, that's pretty much it. But you gotta realize a lot of these engines came out of cars that were, you know, grandpa spec cars. Like Toyota probably never thought that people were gonna start drifting the JZX100 chassis. Um, and they were just kind of more of like a catered to old people car. Um, so yeah, I don't think many of those people ever did oil changes. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, um, everything's looking pretty good. I'm actually pretty impressed with a fair few differences about the JZ compared to the RB. Um, just things like this, like their cam caps are held in with 10 mil bolts, just like the, uh, the RB, but the thread is like an MA instead of an M6. That is beefy. That is a really good upgrade. Um, but obviously I can't give the credit to Toyota for that because Yamaha was all outsourced for their JZ stuff. So, or, and their three, three SGEs and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, um, I'm going to keep working on this. I think I've got to take the water pipe off, uh, the water neck off. And I think that's probably it. Then undo the head studs and heads off. Should be pretty straightforward from here. So we'll zip that off, zip those out, and then we'll find out how bad the damage is. This thing has any of those like little corner 10 mils like RVs do, and it doesn't appear so. so. Oh, it's already loose. Oh. Cardboard ready to sit that on. I guess it's just gonna lift straight off it. Eh? Just like that. Huh. And you know what? This looks really healthy. Um, I don't really see a head gasket issue though. Oh, maybe, no. Huh. Just triple checking, but I don't, yeah, I don't really see a head gasket issue. I mean, it's clogged up a fair bit. Huh. The bores look good, the pistons look good. This engine looks really good. I just, I don't see a head gasket issue. Like at all. Nowhere on the gasket does it appear like it failed or like breached. Like looking at all around the bores here and stuff. Could have been on the bottom though. I don't see anything. There's no signs that this has a blown head gasket. There's no water in the chambers. It all looks great. Weird. I mean, let's look at the bottom of the head, but. This looks great. Like I don't see anywhere here or anywhere around here near these water jackets where it got into combustion, like at all. We'll send the head off and get it cleaned and decked. But it looks like we just scored ourselves a good engine. Like actually a good spare engine. Kind of wild. There's literally nothing wrong with this. I mean, it's a little gunky. It needs um, a bit of a clean. It's not bad. Usual, usual one JZ stuff. I see, like literally, there is no, no signs whatsoever of a head gasket issue. Weird. The shop he had it at um, told him it had a blown head gasket. Maybe it did. Maybe it just was so early that it wasn't showing really any signs and wasn't bad. It's just weird. It looks good. 
like really good. The cross hatching and the bores are amazing. This is a really healthy engine. Weird. I'll probably still take the rods and pistons out and just inspect them, make sure the ring lands are all good and stuff. But, you know, 1Gs are pretty stout. So even stock rods, stock pistons, like they're pretty good. Hmm. I think this is gonna be probably a good block and no problems. Just trying to see if there's anything, but. It looks really good. I'm actually really happy about this. We could, um, you know, put forge rods and pistons in this since we're gonna be, you know, refreshing it anyways. It's probably not a bad idea just to have it forged so that it's, you know, good to go. Um, I know Tomei Japan, Tomei Powered is about to have brand new set of um, 1JZ pistons. Previously they haven't made pistons before and they just do rods. Um, but because you can't get these pistons anymore brand new from Toyota, they decided to um, manufacture them. So we should probably just put a Tomei set in this. They're just right around the corner, so it'll be good. But yeah, interesting. Um, I'm kind of confused because I got this motor way too cheap then. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's just really weird, really weird. There's no signs of a blown head gasket at all. Huh, weird. None, like none, I, this looks perfectly fine. Super weird. Today was full of a lot of wins in my opinion. First of all, can we talk about how there's nothing wrong with that one, Jay? I feel like taking the head off was not even necessary, but obviously I was told it had a blown head gasket. Turns out it doesn't. So that's a win. I'm just gonna refresh it and probably just slap it back together. Although I am very much fighting the urge of forge rods and pistons. But anyways, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, the engine in this is still chuchin and still good. So my idea is refresh that one, put that one in this. Um, not, not for um, this Mitsuri coming up, more so next year, like through the winter, we'll probably do this, the engine change. Um, take this engine out and build this engine um, with forged rods and pistons, and then that can go into something else or just stay on the side as the spare engine for this, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, anyways. A lot of wins today. We obviously fixed up this. Sure, I'm not the, you know, uh, great at bodywork. I think we can all agree on that. But if anyone does have any tips or anything like that who does this for a living, please let me know. Um, like I said, all of this is covered by the full overfender here. And the, the main point of doing this was just so I could get everything kind of straight and not as crazy because I was a bit worried about wheel contact there if I went for a little bit of a thicker wheel, um, sidewall tire. So being able to pull that back out to where it's supposed to be and then seal it all up so no smoke can get through was the main plan. So that's all good there. And we dealt with the rust and everything and that uh, welded the, um, oh, what are they called? The wheel well back together. We sealed that up, put that back in its place and welded it into. So pretty much all that's done. Um, this side is all fine. We don't have to touch this side. It's still perfect. Um, so that's all good. But yeah, uh, a little bit of progress. I'm also looking at these doors. This one we definitely have to replace. Um, this is when TJ hit me. Um, it just kind of pushed in there and it kinked the door really bad here. Now, I could kick that out, but because the Origin uh, Aero Kit has a piece that goes on this, an over fender or over door, I should say, and because now that this is pushed in here, and even if we kick it out, I won't be able to fix the crease line. So this is all creased inside here and see how it's now like in a different position, this part of the door and see the line up here is all messed up. Well, um, that was causing the fiberglass panel that's flat here sticking out more and would catch on the door. So I couldn't actually open this door with this door closed. It would get stuck on it and get wedged. So yeah, I can get complete doors with the glass windows and everything intact for 70 bucks. So that's a win. I think we'll try and do that. I'm just a little upset because I kind of like this array of stickers here. The Kirby that's a uh, starting to fall off, but we can obviously rebuild that. Oh, but this is a classic. This this hasn't been sold in a long time. Do I dare make Daiki change the glass in my new door just so I can keep these stickers? We might have to do that. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with today's progress. We got a lot of stuff done. The car's pretty much spotless and clean as well as everything I wanted to get done, we got done. So I've got my sense of accomplishment and dopamine fix for today. 
And I think that's where we're gonna leave things at the shop. It's time to head home. Make sure I get to spend some time with Hugo before he goes to sleep and obviously spend some time with me.